Hey guys, Solid Board Gamer here. Today I'm going to bring you a slightly different video than usual. I thought I'd bring you my list of the top 10 solo board games or games that have a solo variant as of April 2023. Of course, this is my list and taste, so do bear that in mind. Please let me know in the comments what would make your top 10. I had so many good games to choose from, I could have easily made this a top 20. The games that are still crackers but didn't quite make the list but are well worth your time, I'm going to put in as honourable mentions. And they go to Great Western Trail, Lost Ruins of Arnak, Welcome to the Moon, Parks, Aeon's End, Kate May, Mansions of Madness, Shadows of Killforth, Cartographers, and It's a Wonderful World. So, without further ado, let's crack on with my top 10 solo board game list. So, starting off and coming in at number 10 is Arkham Horror, the card game. Arkham Horror is a story-driven deck construction game which pits you as a helpless investigator against the evils and horrors from the mind of H.P. Lovecraft. The goal of the game is to survive and defeat said horrors using your unique character decks whilst trying to collect clues and advance the game. All this and save the world before time runs out. No pressure then. The things I love about this game is that it has a wonderful story and campaign. You can personalise your deck to play the game your way and there's so much content to sink your teeth into with multiple campaigns available. At number 9 we have Dune Imperium. At number 9 we have Dune, which sees you play as one of the great houses of the Dune universe. Your aim is to seize control of the desert planet Arrakis, the spice therein and ultimately gain power and influence for your house. Compete for resources, engage in conflicts and improve your basic deck of cards to become all powerful. The things I love about Dune Imperium, it's a game in the Dune universe so say no more. It's got good worker placement and deck building mechanics and it's very thematic. At number 8 we have most people's favourite, Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven is an epic campaign game set in a fantasy landscape in and around the town of Gloomhaven. You create a team of mercenaries from the characters of different classes available whom you will battle with through multiple scenarios in the campaign book, defeating monsters, collecting treasures and completing objectives on the way. In true RPG style your characters will have to advance and improve their stats to have a chance against the ever more powerful foes you will face. The things I love about Gloomhaven, it's an epic adventure with over 100 scenarios. There's great character development and deck management. At number 7 we have Cthulhu Death May Die. Another game set in the HP Lovecraft universe. This one though sees you taking your characters into a number of horrific scenarios hoping to survive long enough to be able to summon an elder one and try to defeat it. Battle countless minions who continuously respawn, complete mission tasks and negotiate environmental hazards along the way. The reason I love Cthulhu is it has great story missions, it's a beautiful game, beautiful minis, and it has a wonderful B-movie horror vibe. At number 6 we have Robinson Crusoe. You are shipwrecked on an island with very few resources and no shelter against the harsh environment. You'll have to craft and scavenge everything you'll need to survive this strange and inhospitable place. You have lots of different scenarios to play out with differing objectives and difficulties. You and your team will have to work together and be as efficient as possible to survive. The things I love about Robinson Crusoe is that it captures the difficulties of being shipwrecked brilliantly. It has very tight mechanics. It's a superb puzzle to solve. Coming in at number five, we have Nemo's War. In Nemo's War, you control the infamous Captain Nemo and his ship, the Nautilus. 
While sailing the oceans of the world, you can choose to guide Nemo on a mission of great scientific discoveries or wage war against the great colonial powers and their fleets. Work your way through an adventure deck, surviving long enough to fulfil your chosen motives. I love Nemo's War because it's great source material, there's lots of variety and it's a wonderful push your luck mechanic. It's also a great puzzle to solve. Just outside our top three, at number four, we have Wingspan. Wingspan is a wonderfully themed victory point game. You gain these victory points by collecting and placing birds in their correct habitats, gathering and placing resources, hatching eggs, and trying to meet personal and general goals. At the end of the game, the player with the most victory points is the winner. The things I love about Wingspan is the fact that it's a beautiful game, especially the hand-drawn bird cards. The cards come with a host of interesting facts, it has a solid AI to compete against and it also has a bird feeder dice tower. I mean, you can't beat that, can you? Coming in at number three, we have Terraforming Mars. In this game, you play as one of the corporations tasked with terraforming Mars. With time, some scientific expertise and the odd asteroid strike, maybe you can turn this barren rock into habitable oasis. Within a limited amount of generations, you must try to place nine oceans, raise temperatures, and increase the oxygen level enough to support life. If you manage this, you win. What I love about Terraforming Mars is there's very tight mechanics, real-world scientific projects, excellent car management and engine building. And in second place, we have Scythe. The Great War is over in this alternate 1920s world of Eastern Europa. As competing factions, you farm land, settle skirmishes, enhance your forces and explore and conquer new territories, trying to gain as many victory points as possible. The game ends when one of these factions has placed a star on six objectives. Victory points are then counted up. Whoever has the most is the winner. What I love about Scythe, it has wonderful AI mechanics, clever worker placement, satisfying engine building and it's got mechs. My number one best solo board game goes to... Mage Knight. In Mage Knight you are a powerful wizard whose quest is to gain allies and powerful magic spells in order to defeat monsters and raise cities to the ground. Using a deck of cards unique to your character that you can enhance using mana from the source you will rampage through this fantasy world, building your prestige and renown. What I adore about Mage Knight is the wonderful card management, satisfying combat, superb puzzle to solve. The game is challenging, but anything worth doing should be. So there you have it, my top 10 solo board games. Again, let me know what you would put in your list. Thanks for watching till the end if you did. Remember to like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. I'm the Solo Ball Gamer and I'll see you soon for another adventure. Bye now.